Hey guys, JH, welcome to Practice Tea. And we'll hit this way today because I just found by accident the other day, at this time of the day, um, the sun coming this way, it actually gets on the balls. But there's a lot of clouds in the sky, so you may not be able to see the ball. But the reason I want to hit this way, you know, primarily, guys, is because I just want to to go over this alignment thing, which is which I haven't really done a good job on to date. But what I want to just outline and, 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 and clarify right now is that what, all we want in this, this, this basic, in this, 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 this golf, swing, a prince, uh, golf swing process is an adherence to a core fundamental. And the core fundamental is that we're hitting the ball to the side of our body with closed shoulders. That's the core principle. We're hitting it to the side of our body. We're hitting it there instead of there. That's the big, big difference, guys. The big difference. And that's as simplistic as that. It's a positioning of the ball uh, differential of extreme proportions, which creates a, a swing difference of extreme difference. I believe it's the one single formal flaw that's always been in a golf swing that no one's ever picked up. And the reason no one has ever been able to swing consistently, get the club traveling to the ball on the same path and start it in the same initial direction. That's the formal floor in the golf swing. Well, the formal, what well, that's, that's, uh, that has been the problem that's occurred, but the reason that that has occurred, occurred was because of the formal floor, which was the ball position. Guys, when you're trying to get from here to here with a golf club, there's so much stuff going on, and there's so much opportunity and potential for the club to get on another path and for you to get out of balance. With this golf swing, when we're traveling from here, the club can't get, the club can only go on a straight line from here to the golf ball. You can never ever manipulate the club or yourself to the extent that you could get over it and pull the ball can't get the ball going, if you're right handed you can't get it going left of the target line. You can only start it on the target line or a little bit right. And how much you do that is up to you. Have to work that out with practice guys. So the core principle is all I want you to adhere to. How you do that is up to you. The numbers, the angles is all relative to practicing it, working out what you've got to do. At the end of the day, we have to be able to we have to be able to attack the ball from the inside with the golf club. And when we get to the to the golf ball with the golf club, our shoulders are slightly closed. Now, how do you do that? You can do it any way you like. You can do it any way you like, guys. But for me, I'm just I'm basically just a person that likes to work with, with, with body angles and body geometry. Now, I keep going over this, guys, but if I played the ball on that trail foot in that position there, and I back cock my shoulders and I'm going to swing, I'm going to hit it over there. Because this is my line of attack is really too acute. So I've got to bring that line of attack around to here where my shoulders are square, here. That's where I want them to be when I, well, a little 10 degrees close. That's where I want them to be at impact. This is what you've got to get across in your own mind. That you want to be here at about 10 degrees closed or 15 or 20, whatever suits you and you can cope with at impact. Now, how do you do that, guys? I, I can't do that if I start from here in a dead, dead square line here. Because when I go here and I start down, if I keep my shoulders closed, I'm going to be 40 degrees right for a right-hander. 
So I have to work out how to to make all the angles work. And for me guys, it's basically this. The ball's off the center of the foot or behind the foot. I'm playing it further and further back as I go along now because it's just suiting me. So if I get it back here guys, and then I just turn my feet, and whatever that is, whatever that number is there, that I feel that I can back cock my shoulders and then as I'm coming into the ball, this is how you want to do it guys, work it out this way. Go around here and say, okay, here's my shoulders here. Mine are 50 degrees left of the target. Guys, I can't explain it any better than this. That's 90 degrees. This is 45, 50 left of that. I can't explain it any better than that. Look at this, look at this here. I, this club is pointing over here, guys. That's where my shoulders are. So I've got to work out a way of getting my shoulders back here for a back cock and then complete the backswing and then on the downswing by the time I get to the ball I want to have my shoulders <coughs> in that position there which is closed to the target line now you've got to work that geometry out for yourself and just do it slowly just do this set up over the ball take your number here what you think is your number back cock your sh shoulders say okay what is that I'll just bring this this lead foot up a little bit Someone, someone said I'm fiddling with my feet. Well guys, I'm establishing my balance. The foot line after I've worked out my angles is only for balance. Because my shoulder line's not, not changing. Don't look at the foot line, look at the shoulder line. It's not changing. Foot line doesn't influence where the golf club goes. Never has, never will. Total fallacy. The day my arms are attached to my hips, yeah, maybe that'll happen. And someone said that, you know, JH, when you get over the ball you get in there and you're fiddling with your feet. I might be fiddling with my feet and, and, and fidgeting with my feet, guys, but that's only to get my balance factor. But these shoulders are not changing. I'm not fiddling with my shoulders. They're the same. Don't look at the feet. So, okay, we'll do it this way. Really uh, um, slow motion. Here we are, back footed. We turn here. We step away. We feel that angle there. Then we come back here and we back cock. Now, now just go through this. Just take the club back here and then just bring it down and get the club to the ball and see where your shoulders are. If you bring it down and you, and you get to the ball and your shoulders are open, then you haven't gone far enough left initially. That's how you'll find it, guys. That's how you'll find it. You have to do this slow motion evaluation process. I'll go way over here, I'll go 80 degrees, 75 degrees left. Step away here. Bring this foot up. Now I'm going to back cock. No, oh, that's a lot of back cock there. Now, I've been a long way to the, to the left as a right-hander. Now, as, as I come in here now, because I've been a long way, long way to the right, I'm too closed. I'm too closed. I'm too closed. I'm 30 degrees closed. I don't want to be that close. So you've got to work this number out, guys. You've got to work that number out. And it may not be may not be much for some people. Okay, it depends on your flexibility. What your balance factors are. But at the end of the day, once we've we've established our number, whatever it is, we want to have the club to go straight back as a feeling. Just feel like it's going straight there. It won't, but that's the feeling. Now once I, I get here. I back cock, bring that foot up. Look, these shoulders are not changing. The feet are fiddling, but my shoulders aren't. They're not changing, guys. Here. They're just not changing. And then we just take it here. And then just bring it down. And get the feeling of that. Have a look at your shoulders when you get down to the ball. Where are they pointing? Where do you think you'd hit the ball? Or just hit some golf shots. And if you continuously just hit the ball straight right of your target, if you do that, the ball just goes, you know, like 45 yards right of your target, then clearly you've got to get your shoulders closed more or, or, or square it at the target line. They're too closed and you haven't back cocked enough. That's it, guys. And that, I know it's difficult to understand this, but it's this... This compensating, opening up and compensating and then back cocking and having a look where your shoulders are on the line. 
I'm actually getting to the stage now where I'm playing the ball further and further back. And I find that the further back I play it, the better I hit it. I actually had a session yesterday where I had the ball where I had the ball here guys, like way back, way back here as a position. Don't worry about the uh, the hip line. Only worry about the shoulder line. And the loading. See, I'm loading into that trail side dramatically. Slow motion. Here we are. We cock here. We step away, guys. Shoulders are here. Now I'm going to back cock the shoulders. And this foot here is just getting this, I'm doing this here to get this trail foot in position. Back cock here, I am here. Come in here. Where do I want the shoulders? Yeah, that's good. That's about, I'm about 15 degrees close. Well, we'll just hit a couple up here. Haven't hit any shots. Should be able to see some ball flight today. Just hit it on that line, guys. You should be able to see that. Shouldn't have any trouble seeing that at all. Because the sun's actually beating down in that direction. <clears throat> Step away, Jay. Yeah, I think the sun, I mean, I just try a couple of different angles to just see. I just want you to pick up some ball flight. So I don't know where the sun's going to pick it up best. There's a bit of cloud there, so I hit that one just a little bit up to the left of the tree there because there's a bit of blue sky there. Step away. Back cock. They're pretty st <laughs> well the ball doesn't move guys that that's the whole point of this exercise or the whole point of building a golf swing with this type of mechanics associated with it the ball is never going to change its starting line ever and i can step up dead coal guys and hit those shots here guys i even feel now sometimes i come up and i'm almost I'm almost here. I'm almost there. Uh, the ball's actually almost off the back of my foot. And I'm just doing that. I'm building, building, building. Because I think the further back I can get the ball, the better I'm going to hit it. Because my, my attack on the ball will be more straight line. All right. Step away. Back cock. Ball doesn't move. Guys, there's a really uh, a lot of wind here today. Uh, and so, and that's, it, it's probably 35 k's. And when it gets out into the chute out there, it just has a bit of, a uh, little bit of movement on it. It's just sort of a crosshead wind. I'm playing this way back, guys, way back. And I feel like I'm aiming over here.
I uh, <laughs> the grass here is so long, guys. Okay, I really belt this one. Okay, come on, James. Ball way back, way back. Well, now, guys, that's 15 in the air longer. This is five iron, but that's that's the turbo. And the turbo, guys, is the five o'clock nose turning into a six o'clock nose. The more that you can really keep that five o'clock nose back, you just keep the shoulders closed and you really get some hit on the golf ball. That's the whole idea of this. As soon as the, show, as soon as the nose... Now watch this. I'll hit it, I'll just let the, I'll let the nose roll forward with this shot which will let the right shoulder out and you watch the consequence when the nose rolls forward like this as, as we get into our back cock position here this nose is like a guard for that and it keeps it there but if I let that nose if I let my head roll look what happens to my shoulder and I'll let my nose roll and you watch where this ball goes just hope we've got enough wide, wide I just hope we have a, a wide enough angle lens to pick up how far left this ball will go Just going to let the, the nose roll. Look over here, guys. Look. Was it 40 yards left? 35 yards left? If you wanted to hit a shot <laughs> like that on the golf course to get out of trouble, just let the nose roll. I was talking to one of the guys here yesterday. I was just showing some shot making. I said, man, if I want to move it there, I just want to sling it around, just let the nose roll. So we call that a nose roll as opposed to a five o'clock nose. But guys, I haven't hit a shot, and I, I'm absolutely, totally honest with you, no exaggeration, I have not hit a shot left from the first moment I came out and tried to swing. No shots have gone left. The sun should be great for picking this ball flight up. Now that's another, that's another bit of shot making. I'd say the hardest thing I've got to have to come to grips with is the five o'clock nose. I mean, I still a little bit of that, and I move then from five to probably three. Now, when you do that, you just get the blade staying open a little bit. And you get a little push. Now, if you want to push the ball to the target or push around the corner, perfect. I mean, I just held that up into that wind there. I just move the head a little bit and it pushes it like you know ten yards to the right. It's just a perfect, perfect golf shot if you want to to play a shot. If you want to play a shot, it's just all right, we'll give this a bit of a bit of a twist. Come on, George. Five o'clock nose. Five, the only way I can get five o'clock nose, I've got to keep repeating it. Five o'clock nose, five o'clock nose. Such a good shot. I aimed it a little bit out there, just trying to hold it into that wind. And guys, with my practice regime, as I keep repeating all the time, I never try and hit the same same target. Always pick a new target. Try and hit a different direction every time. I'll be stepping out of camera here. Come on, Jay, give this a real. Okay. Can I... Turn this one back into the wind. That's the shot, just turn it back into the wind.
Just hit a couple this way guys, across the camera. Here I am guys, here. Look how much I'm turning around, over here. Back cock a little bit. That's right over the camera. See guys, the arms go this way. They don't go that way as exaggerated as that. You can't have them go that far, you hit the ball straight right. So they're still coming in on that target line, but they're into out. Now the other thing you want to be cognizant of, guys, which will help you, when you've got the ball back here, and when we're in position here, don't lean the shaft forward. Don't do that. Keep the shaft basically straight up and down with that trail arm. And so that when we back cock, we're in this position here. There. Because if we've got it here, guys, and then we back cock here, look how much further it goes. Not only that, it opens the club face dramatically. So just that's a point that you've really got to, you have to be aware of. Now I can't, um, I'm aiming straight at the uh, freeway here, and these are my old balls here. I bring my, some old balls of mine so that when I hit them out there, they're not the range owner's balls, they're my old balls. I buy old range balls off the owner here and I hit them into a into a lake near a property that where I go. And I've got lots of them, so I bring them out here when I'm going to hit a couple of shots this way. Here we go. Watch this. Guys, that's just that's straight at the freeway, and that is just that is hammer time. Hammer time. So guys, it's a matter of working out your own numbers. You've got to work your own numbers out. <clears throat> At the end of the day, all we want to do is get the club tracking to the side of our body with closed shoulders, like that. That's what we want to feel. We don't want the club moving in front of our body ever. Ever. You just don't want that, guys. Not with this golf swing. I promise you, this is this is the way to hit the ball consistently. I've proven it. it a theory is, 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 is usually a theory, and that's why they call it a theory. You can never really prove it, because you can do it a thousand times, but the next time it won't do that. So you can't ever prove the theory. But in scientific circles, what what is suggested as proof of a proof theory is if you do it enough and it produces the same result that's accepted in scientific circles as a proven theory. Now guys I'm telling you this is a proven theory because I have hit so many shots well I haven't hit any over here the ball starts in the same direction it has started in the same direction every single solitary shot I've hit so the theory is proven ok go through the process James. here turn And see this guy, see this arm here? That's the, the feeling you want in the golf swing. See this here? Because this shoulder is resisting so much with the closed shoulders, it gets this type of feeling. It's like a blocking type feeling. If you can get that with your practice shots, you're on your way. You don't want this swing to feel like this as a finish, because that's low shoulder and open shoulder. You want high shoulder and close. I had a guy here yesterday and I just got behind him and I and I said, take the club to the top of the swing. And now started down and come into impact. And as he came down, I pushed this, held this here and pushed it forward. And he said, oh, I've got to do that. I said, that's exactly what you've got to do. That's the feeling you've got to have. As if you had a wall here, and this lead shoulder is never going to bang into the wall. It's always going to be here. Anyway, guys, that's basically uh, it for today. I hope you can see some ball flight. And... Uh, I'll get better at explaining this, but remember it's the core issues, that's all we want to do, it's the core issues, nothing else, the core issues.
and that is hitting the ball from beside the body from into out with closed shoulders. Well, however you do that is up to you, but that's what we've got to do. Okay guys, uh, we'll, uh, we'll do some more tomorrow.